The winner of this week's award for taking down the internet goes to Cloudflare. And of course, it just happened to be Rust that took down the internet. And a lot of people are laughing about that. A lot of people are taking some shots. Well, I'm going to give a little bit of a different opinion on this one. So buckle up because we got a bit of a yapping session to get through. Also, could you just press like and subscribe? Look at this. I'm almost to a million. I'm this close. Make it happen. Hey, you could make it happen before the new year. That'd be crazy. All right, to understand the Cloudflare outage, you need to understand how Cloudflare works. So I want you to look at this really simple picture here that I am drawing. Effectively, Cloudflare is what is referred to as a reverse proxy for most people's case, which means that when you go and make a request, say to downdetector.com and you wanna see what's actually down, it goes through Cloudflare. Cloudflare does some basic checks like, hey, are you a bot? Should we block your traffic? Are you a known LLM? Should we block that traffic? What kind of rules do you have set up that prevents certain types of access? Is it on the approved ports? It has a whole list of things that it does. And then after going through all those lists, if you pass all the check marks and you are a good person and they're fine serving you traffic, goes and checks some cash. If it can serve out a cache and boom, it hits you right back. Else it's gonna go to the origin server, the actual down detector server. Get out that page, come back through here, go through the swirly pipes one more time, and then go to your computer right there. And that's how you view most of the internet. This is why Twitter went down when Cloudflare went down. This is why Down Detector went down when Cloudflare went down, because this middle part, the bar, went away. All right, so now that you kind of understand the most basics of what a reverse proxy is, one of these services in Cloudflare is called the bot management. How bot management works is that it takes approximately 60 different features, and of those 60 different features, establishes some sort of statistical model to say that, hey, you are or are not a bot. We should or should not serve you traffic. Are you high risk or low risk? And of course, these features, it needs to change all the time. It simply can't be a static set. They can't have Cloudflare engineers pushing new features by having to deploy new code. So it's refreshed approximately every five minutes, a new set of features will hit the bot management. That's right, new features hit the bot management. Anyways, this is how the bot management just stays up to date. When a new attack happens and some new features need to be tweaked or things need to be changed, Cloudflare can change that. And within just a couple minutes, the entire website can then stabilize to these new set of features. Now, Cloudflare also made another change uh, earlier to a data storage service in which how it retrieves data changes slightly. Now, when you combine all this together, something goofy happened. When the new feature flags came down, instead of getting the approximately 60 feature flags that it would normally get, it ended up getting plus 200 feature flags. Now you're probably thinking, okay, plus 200 features, that's not a big deal, right? Right? Well, it's actually a big deal. Because of the performance requirements of Cloudflare, it actually has a bunch of what is called pre-allocation. Now, if you don't understand this, effectively when the program starts, it determines how much memory it needs to use so that way it can run as fast as possible. This may sound a bit strange, but it's actually one of NASA's rule of 10 power rule for safety critical software. For NASA, the world doesn't change out of underneath it. It produces a piece of hardware and inside there, they always have the same allocations. That way it always has the same steady performance. And this is what Cloudflare was effectively attempting to have happen. It would always have the same steady performance because every microsecond actually makes a meaningful difference to Cloudflare. So Cloudflare actually has a rule that says if there's more than 200 features, like, hey, that's not expected, that can't happen, we're blowing up the service. Now, Cloudflare is filled with some of the best engineers out there, and I don't want to rag in them at all. I know that they just got done being taken out by a React use effect, and now they're being owned by an unwrap in Rust. But the reality is this, is that unwraps can be very good for a specific set of software. It is not good for servers. Servers that unwrap crash, and when a server crashes, requests go away. And so you do not want your service, you know, balancing on the point of an unwrap or an expect. Now, I am a big fan for those NASA power rules. And number five is that effectively two asserts per function. And normally I would follow this, but when it comes to a server, you do want those things kind of turned off. And if you're unfamiliar with how unwrap works, unwrap is an assert. And an assert that fails panics the program. If you're not familiar with what Unwrap does in Rust, let me explain something really quickly. In Rust, there's these things called result objects. A result object effectively is either a value or it's an error. There is no try catch in Rust, so instead you get this nice beautiful pattern like this. You get back something that is either an error or a value. If you know it should always be a value, it can never be anything but a value, People will often use something called expect, which you can kind of pass in a string and say like, hey, this should never fail. Never fail, right? You can imagine this with a mutexes. If you use mutexes, unless if you have a poisoned lock, it should never fail. So often you'll see with mutex code, 
and expect next to it. Or you can use unwrap, which is identical to expect, except for it does not have this message right here. It just gives you the generic failure message. And of course, there was arguments all across Twitter. We're not even going to look at them because they're not even worth looking into. At least it's not use effect this time, and it was actually a real large system constraint, just cascading failure that ultimately led to Cloudflare crashing. And hopefully you just got the day off of work. And lastly, I know a lot of people were really hoping I was going to crap on Rust or say something. I actually think Rust is a pretty fine choice for a language for this particular domain of problems. Very well-known set of inputs, very well-known set of outputs. It's supposed to behave consistently. They want it in a language in which is going to be a tippity top for performance. So you're pretty much narrowing it down to C or Rust. And they chose Rust because Rust has a great type system. And in this case, sure, the type system ultimately was the reason for the downfall, but nonetheless, great type system. And likely this error would have happened whether it was written in C or Rust. So am I like, oh my gosh, I don't, I honestly don't care. Come on, guys. Come on. Let's at least wait for something stupid to happen before we dog on it, okay? Hey, the name? This is the Primogen. Hey, is that HTTP? Get that out of here. That's not how we order coffee. We order coffee via SSH, terminal.shop. Yeah, you want a real experience? You want real coffee? You want awesome subscriptions so you never have to remember again? Oh, you want exclusive blends with exclusive coffee and exclusive content? Then check out Cron. You don't know what SSH is? Well, maybe the coffee's not for you. Terminal coffee in hand, living the 